Okay, I'm here in Hereford. I've been visiting a few clients, doing a few interesting things, and thought I'd pop in and see good friend Nick from Astute Graphics because I noticed there's a few changes on their website and their products uh, and how they're, they're selling it online. And I wanted to find out what was going on and uh, how it's working out for them. So uh, let's go and see Nick. How's things, Nick? Uh, all very good. Thank you very much, Ben. A long time no see. Yeah, it has been a little while. I mean, listeners yeah. of the podcast, I think you've been on about twice now. Yeah, it could be. You, I it's think you were one of the very few. first people to attend, uh, come yeah. on our podcast. That's why you've got very few subscribers. Oh, come on. I think you, I think you bring <laughs> the subscribers with you, Nick. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, the, the multitude. Yes. Um, I, I want you to, for people who don't know who you are, mm. I want you just to re remind, remind them who you are and what you do. Um, uh, tell us a little bit more about Suit Graphics. Okay. Astute Graphics started in 2006, and we do plugins for Adobe Illustrator. That's what we're known for. Yeah. It's been growing every year since, and we're in 2019, aren't we now? So I used to have hair. Well, at one point in my life I did. And basically, it's been a, quite a journey to get to this point. But we're still producing, obviously, plugins for Adobe Illustrator. We're still known for that. But over the last few years, we've also been developing technologies in the background. And, yeah, it's, it's quite, quite breathtaking actually what my colleagues have actually come up with over the last years and astonishing proud of what they've done technology that to be honest leading companies don't have and this little pokey company in Hereford does this, these astonishing tools it is and we were just talking over lunch earlier and you were saying how some of the just the very small um, uh, concepts within the plugins could sometimes take months nine months in some cases to yeah. actually develop I mean I was astounded by the uh, amount of time, really, and, and an investment of, that goes into that. Everything. This is the thing. If it looks easy, <laughs> yeah. we've got, um, let me see, four people who actually do software engineering for the actual plugin side and you know, surrounding plugins like the installation and et cetera, like that. And it just takes time. And, and I'm not one of those people who says, right, I need it tomorrow. You know, it needs to be done tomorrow. Because I come from an engineering background, mechanical mm -hmm. one, really. I realise that you don't always know when you're inventing something for the first time how long it's going to take to make that thing. So sometimes it takes longer and sometimes people just love the things that took 10 seconds to put in and they don't quite appreciate the things that took, say, six months or plus to put in. But that's the nature of the game. You don't always know how it's going to be. But that, I find that quite interesting because you're obviously quite trusting as, as a you know owner of a business. You're investing in, in other engineers to be able to help sort of bring those ideas to life. I mean, how, how does that work for you? How do you, how do you muster that trust? How do, you, how do you maintain that confidence over that length of time until something is ready? It, it builds up over time. I mean, I've been working with... There are two colleagues I've been working with in the engineering and they started in uh, 2010-2011. And they've been with us ever since. And the other engineers as well, how, since they joined, you know, we haven't lost engineers in that respect. It's absolutely fantastic. And that trust builds up mm. over time. But they know better than me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very simple fact. I mean, you wouldn't employ a, a dog and bark yourself, as somebody once told me. And it's very true. If, if yeah. you've got a software engineer who really knows his stuff, and our engineers really do know their stuff, why would I try and direct them? You know, uh, within Because obviously we direct in terms of, what we're looking for and there are obviously tweaks and things we ask for but in terms of the overall concept of how they're creating things we were trying not to say well can you code it this way because a i wouldn't have a clue about yeah. it b they do know better yeah so it's about le leaving it to their their own devices to build it in the in the way yeah. but you're setting the scene if you will so yeah. where you want to go i've always found your company interesting since how long have we known each other 1803 precisely <laughs> is it that long ago yes before podcasts <laughs> um it probably was actually before i introduced you to podcasts mm -hmm. And I've always been fascinated. You know, you started off with this idea of the plugins and you got that developed and, and you moved that forward. But not only have you just been selling the plugins to people who use Illustrator, but also going out to America and negotiating deals with larger companies, like very big household names, mm. uh, in terms of how they use them, managing licenses. So you've really got quite, a, built up quite a big remit of business and how, how you work with it. How did you cope with that side of things? Very organic. Yeah. So larger companies come to us. We don't go, we haven't got a sales team. We haven't got one salesperson. We never had a salesperson really? in the company. We have to do it by word of mouth. If we produce something good, people would talk about it. In this industry, people do swap between jobs very quickly in terms of, especially in America, where on the West Coast particularly, there's a much lower expectancy in terms of how long you can set a company before you're almost expected to move on. It's quite yeah. a, a really? different culture. You know, I've, I've heard this from the engineers uh, over in, not our engineers, but other engineers over on the West Coast, like if you're in a, t a company such as one of the large household brands, which I shouldn't name because you'll probably get sued. If you're there still two years later, they'll probably ask why you're still there. You know, is there something wrong with you? But I've also you known... You're closer to the window. <laughs> yeah, no. the way out. Uh, yeah. 
But then again, I've known um, you know, great people in Adobe who've been there for 20 years plus. So it doesn't, that, that's a generalism that doesn't always hold out. This is a nice thing about old age. I've completely forgotten the question. <laughs> well, no, it's, just, it's about relationships, really. Yeah, sorry, you, you've got customers. Yeah. You've, got, yeah. you've got people who buy your tool because it saves them time. You know, yeah. whether they're graphic artists or they're converting something from a, a drawing through to an illustrated vector point artwork. But you've also got these bigger companies. And, it, and how, how do you manage the relationships between them? Is it something you like mm. doing? Is it something yeah. you have to like doing? Or how have you... Oh, it, it is lovely going out. To, uh, we've got one very large uh, customer. Most of our customers tend to be more freelance-based, up to small design groups. That, that's basically how the design industry tends to be. But you go to I, if I go to the largest customer who've got hundreds upon hundreds of designers dotted all over the world, it's like a microcosm of the world. You have designers in there who are very experienced, and designers who've just come out of college and right. less experienced on tools and all that. And you see how they work, and, and it's, it's fascinating sitting down and see how their workflow is. And there's some stories, for example, um, when I sit down and I go, okay, you've got our tools. You've, I'm, so I'm not here to sell. I'm here to see how you work, and can I improve it for you? And I remember this one designer. He was f- relatively young, and he designed a, uh, well, I shouldn't say what it is, but anyway, the T-shirt and the logo yeah. on it. And I said, oh, that's, that's lovely. Uh, tell me how you did it. Oh, he, he spoke so passionately about it. It took me two days. Look, I moved all these points. And all. I went, yeah, well, you mean like the plugin you've already got, and you press two buttons, and it went like that effect there, exactly the same effect. And he just, his face was distraught, and he started crying. I went, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll tell you, I'll just what? adjust it so it looks a bit better now. <laughs> and I feel really bad, but... It's sort of, I, I love to explore, I don't love to see people, be mean to people, but I love to explore how they create things. And it, that, that sort of learning, how it showed, that person showed me how they did it by hand, made me realise, A, why we did that tool in the first place. Yeah. But also, what struggles have they got? And this is a universe, doesn't matter how big the company is. I've, I've met freelance designers who worked in the kitchen who've designed the coins in our pockets. That's always impressed me. Up to these massive multinationals. The, the, the experience is the same. Mm. They don't always know everything. Um, but sometimes they know lovely little sort of nuggets where you, you latch onto the go, oh, tell me a bit more about that little thing. That sometimes evolves into a tool. Uh, sometimes evolves into a sale because I can say, well, that's really inefficient. Why not try this way? So, it, no, it is, it, it is fascinating because it's it's kind of very similar way to the way I work in terms of solution selling to some degree. You're listening to the problem, you're finding out what works and then putting a solution to that based on what you've got that will work for them. Yes. And if you haven't got anything, it may be actually you can recommend someone else. Mm, yeah. It may be you say, actually, we can't help you with that now, but that's a really interesting idea. Mm. If you're willing, let's have a look at that in later. The power of being able to say, no, we're not the best people for that or whatever, that is more important. And sometimes it's very hard to say from a business yeah. point of view. We can't do that. It's not not in our capacity, etc. And I've I've made that mistake where you try and fudge your way through it, and it, you should have just said no like a year ago. Actually, and this brings us back onto. Uh, we won't go into the conversation we had over lunch, but we were talking a little bit about the so this, so confidence in some ways, I guess, yeah. and how you get that confidence. It's actually one of our um, recent interviewees, and she was talking about not giving a crap. Basically, if you can get to a point where you aren't worried about the outcome, yeah. you will actually do a better job. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things we we're talking about is that is getting to a point where you, it's not that you don't really care, it's that you can get to a point where you just yeah. let it all go and actually you can do a better job by just doing what you do well. Yes, it's actually hard and that, that takes experience. I mean, yeah, you know, I've given advice to other people over the years. I've received much more advice from other people and I'd love to be able to say, to others, well, here's some of my learns and all that. And I, I want to do that over time, when, especially when I get more time myself. Because it's some things come from confidence, some things come from experience, something comes from bravado. All, the, all these things come together. And I love, for example, the idea of these business books. Yeah. How to be a better business person. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. You, you read page 596 and now you're ready to go into the world. No, sorry. You need to have experience. There is no there is no shortcut. You need to do it. You need to make mistakes. That's the most important thing. Second most important thing, you need to learn from those mistakes you yeah. made. And then it, it goes on from that. So continuously, if you if you try and say, you know, not giving a monkey, and we've gone through that recently, that you, you can stand back. That is only because you're standing on the knowledge that the business is already in operation and is, and is going and you've got a, a known income coming in you're not yeah. panicking about that the customer base is ready you've got all the legal stuff ready it's all done and dusted you can only then start stepping back and go well perhaps i can be less panicky about it yes it's not you don't care that's definitely not the case but in a way it's definitely that you can take a breather and go oh actually does it really matter i mean one of my things here is that it 
August, don't be wrong, I said, nobody's ever died because their plug-in failed to work on that day yet. yet. <laughs> Thanks. Now I feel really bad. <laughs> really what can happen. And, and actually, yeah. if you beat yourself up about that, whether yeah. it's you're spending too long finessing a graphic or whether the coding is perfect, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. It's it's And it's not about shipping crap. It mm. really isn't just mm. about getting stuff out there. And it's not even about coding. It's, you know, when, when, when you're in business, it's, it's about doing something productive without overthinking it. Yeah. Because actually, with experience, and I think experience is important, here that's when you your best work can come out when you're you're not thinking about it completely do you think a little bit and maybe this is more for me than than you but a little uh, some of that comes from a little bit of imposter syndrome sometimes i overthink things certainly not so much with these interviews but there's some people i I interview where i think should i really be interviewing this person am i able to be interviewing this person and i know i am because this is what i do and they 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 want to come and talk to me about it Mm. but i feel that some of that caring actually comes from maybe a little bit of imposter syndrome kicking in I think, I think there's that modesty that you have to have as well. Richard Branson, he's done very successful. And he's always pulled up as an example, isn't he? It's either you know, Mr. Tesla, Mr. Branson, whatever. They always come up as the examples. Mm-mm. But I hope that really when they come across in an interview that they don't say they know it all. Because I've always said, if I ever well, interview for somebody, for example, to, to work here, and they think they know it all, they're definitely not the right person. I don't know it all. How can I possibly know it all? There's no chance on earth. There's, there's new learnings every single day. Yeah. So you've got to have that knowledge that you don't know everything. Somebody next to you will know better on certain subjects, but they may not know on other subjects. And if they have that closed mind saying, I know everything, so I'll just move on. But you have to have that little bit of confidence yourself as well, even if it's made up. Yeah, and actually that can help. Anyway, we've gone down a rabbit hole, totally my fault. What I really wanted to speak to Nick about, and and just to give you some context, we're actually here at Astute Graphics headquarters in Hereford, a lovely graphics behind, which some some, uh, of you may have seen on some of their... Sean Ferguson's artwork. Is it? Yeah, yeah, he he did it especially for... uh, I think that one wasn't for the background, but that one was uh, the uh, other backgrounds that were incorporated in. Yeah, and a local hair for designer. Uh, yeah, I love this. It's been it's nice. Sorry, We've got apologies. professional studio lighting. What more can I want for this? Um, but what I want to talk to Nick about is he's, um, well, as a company, you've recently changed your plug-in pricing from mm. uh, they were individual and you could buy a pack of them yeah. together um, to having a subscription model. Now, I know when Adobe moved over to this um, this model, there was uproar. People were yeah. very cross. For me, it actually worked out really well because we could go from not paying for it um, to actually paying for it completely legitimately and at an affordable rate. And I was intrigued about, because I'd saw a little bit of minor backlash on mm. Twitter about this, and I'm intrigued as, as to why you decided to go to subscription and then how you handled that, what, what, was, what was positive out of it and maybe... Mm maybe some of the, the downsides to it, and just if you'd mind sharing some of those. Yeah, it's interesting, because, I mean, first and foremost, I, I've got to say that we've never used the word subscription, because we, we looked at this, we looked at it for quite a long time, because what was happening is that we had, uh, we still have, like, 16 products, 15, 16 products you can buy, and it's getting very complex. What products have people got? When do uh, suddenly new products come out for upgrades, etc., mm-hmm. paid for upgrades? And the administration side was nightmare, but that doesn't matter to customers. What was uh, mattering to customers is that they were getting duplicate orders because they didn't realise they'd already bought something. They weren't getting the best value because they bought it as a package when it was perhaps an offer, and now it's not an offer. And it was really messy. You know, where do you stand? And so it all came from that. Going back a little bit further, it came back from one guy who who, uh, worked here in the past. And he came on board and very quickly said, can you install the software? And how does it look for you and uh, stored it and said yeah you, you say you save people's time I said yeah of course we save people's time he said yeah it took me 96 clicks to install your software wow. I went you counted that anyway, yeah okay I went uh, yeah yes yes we knew it was a pain and it was that that was the the initiator for changing everything and that was years ago you know it's, it sounds very easy well, well we'll change over to another scheme very quickly you you can't do that it's simply not possible there's a technology there's a business side etc financial side so we went we'll look at doing monthly so we looked at doing monthly in fact we worked with other people looking at these figures etc we didn't do it all on our own because we got we're a successful company we never had a loan the company and so there's no venture capital so we've got to stand on our own two feet mm-hmm. so you don't suddenly want to pull the rug from under your own feet and go no money coming in so we looked at that but we also mainly looked at the customer's point of view right what's the backlash against monthly what is the problem against monthly and the main thing is that as soon as you stop paying the software is taken away from yeah. you. A bit like you've got Netflix, whatever, as soon as you start paying, you haven't got access to these films. 
it's fair enough. So it's the same principle, Adobe Creative Cloud, I wasn't that happy when it changed over myself. But from a business point of view, when you look at the figures and you go, this makes a massive amount of sense. I haven't got this massive in initial investment. Yeah. I don't have to upgrade you know, thousands of pounds every other year, whatever. I just know what the cost is. And I'll get everything. I don't have to worry about do i need premiere pro for some people in the no office? exactly and actually that's i was restricted and i would i what we were using probably just illustrator and photoshop because we were opening client files but actually we've got after effects in mm -hmm. there yeah. we've got audition which yeah. we which we started off using to edit the podcast with yeah. and you've got all it suddenly opens up X, xd or is it xd for yeah. but anyway you've got this so, whole package so, yeah. and you don't need to think about it yeah. and it removes that huge hurdle to oh which one do i want which one do i want to invest in and i thought that 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 made so, so much sense and to me, it's like renting an office. You know, we are renting a toolkit. And when we yeah. stop needing that toolkit, yes. we don't need it anymore. Yes. You know, we've moved, moved into something else. We don't need Photoshop. We don't need Illustrator. Yep. And it, it made complete, to me, complete sense. Mm. But we hadn't really started using those tools beforehand that much. And so we sort of skirted around the edges and never really needed mm. it. I can see for some people who feel they've invested thousands of pounds in these um, bits of yeah. software, yeah. they just want to keep it going and just get the updates for it. I, I mean, let's face it, we're, we're, say we're talking in the Western world in a very general phrase there because if we're talking about an, an average income or you know necessary to live in in europe or north america canada or wherever that income has to be nowadays relatively high because yeah. you've got all the expenses of life okay the expense of the adobe creative cloud which is i don't know 50 60 70 pounds a month depending let's face it that's such a small factor with what you need to pull in as income and if that is your main tool set to work on it's the biggest bargain on earth i've seen people spend more at starbucks every month than actually on the thing that's earning them the money. Imagine taking it away from I know people say, oh, I've got Affinity Designer. That's very nice. Now, Affinity Designer is a very powerful package. And there's other ones for the photo side, for film. Pixel Mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, and they're all great, but sometimes you'll need this sort of other level. And where only Adobe's 30 mm, odd years of experience and development will actually do it. And yeah, I, I think there are areas for improvement for Adobe. Adobe know there are areas of improvement for Adobe, but it's still the leading set of software for professionals. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, so we, anyway, we apologize. We, we entered this whole process and we said, well, how are we going to do it? So the biggest problem, I think, with uh, Creative Cloud um, is that as soon as you stop using it, you haven't got access to your files. That was always the argument. Yeah. Okay, keep paying then. Okay, that's one way of putting it. But the other way is that we said, well, we looked around and we saw one package called uh, Sketch from a company called Bohemian in Holland. And they did something, and I didn't take notice of it very much at the start. And they do a scheme that you pay for the software, you pay up front. There's no subscription actually with them at all. And then after the year, they will say, look, you can keep what you got, but you won't get any updates. Yeah. Fair enough. I didn't pay for the update. Which is exactly the same as actually if you bought software. Yes. Especially in the original box In the original days, box, yeah, yeah. You buy the software yeah. and that was it. Yeah. You could get to keep it and continue continue running it. And, uh, and yeah. yeah, if you keep your computer exactly the same, don't update the operating system, don't update uh, you know other related software that is critical for your workflow, keep it exactly the same, Bohemian will not charge you again and you'll keep, be able to keep on using it. As soon as you start updating things, they may say, well, we want now some money for the extra development we've done. Of course. Well, actually, that's, that's a good model. And actually, that took over from the idea of the monthly. That's why we don't say it anywhere on our website, subscription. We say annual service plan. So basically, at the end of it, you get to keep it. And if you do change it, or you want more compatibility, latest illustrators, etc. Yeah, okay, you, you can buy again, but we're not forcing you. We're not taking it away from you yeah. straight away in that respect. Now, we obviously have the problem where we have uh, existing, this is our biggest concern. Loads and loads of existing customers. How do you transition them to the new model? And went through whole scenarios. It's been a massive amount of planning. And we ended up saying, well, actually, let's make it quite a short time scale to change over. Rather than saying, here's a whole, whole consultation period for a year, you know, to transition over. But no, actually, we'll be quite short and almost brutal about it in a way. But trying to be fair. So, for example, if you were an elite customer, that means you had all the software. Before we changed over, you don't pay anything for the next year. You get 100% discount for the next year. So, there's a and then it, it scales down. Down. And I know people have got uh, annoyed with it, and I apologise for that. But there will yeah. always be people who yeah. fall in the cracks. Unfortunately, that's the that's the way with everything. But I think you be fair. It, you've you've got a, a, to what appears to me a fair pricing system in terms of a new subscriber but, but also to think about people who have been loyal and, mm. and have everything but the, the nice yeah exactly and it's a pity you never want to annoy somebody because that, that's never going to be happy and never going to end well but on the other hand we want to make it you know as good as possible for the majority it's always been about the majority and this is always the hard point in mm. business 
How do you make the majority happy? Same with employees when you're you know, employing people. How do you make the majority of employees happy? And then same with customers. How do you make the majority of customers happy? So even though you know, we've had obviously people you know, give feedback that they don't like it, so many more have come back privately or by emails and said this is brilliant. Yeah. And the number of people who have taken up the new scheme compared to the old scheme has doubled. Right. And that's in the first month. So there's, there's probably a lot of people who might not have sprung for the, um, yeah. the high-level packages before, but now they don't have to think. that There is, yeah. there, uh, there, there is no choice. There's one yeah. choice. Even if you just want one of the products, you get so many more mm. bonus products thrown in, thrown, yeah. thrown in there for the tools that you get. For some people, it comes down to money, but often that's not the case. It's about um, making decisions, and often indecision is the worst thing they can make. And if, you, if they can just make a decision quickly and then start saving mm. time, then they'll start finding uses for the other yeah. plugins, I'm sure, if they work with vectors at all. You've got a fantastic system as well. What's the name of your website? Can you plug your own website again? I think you can plug Rather Inventive, yeah. No, oh, no, no. Inventive People, you mean? Yeah, Sorry. That's one. No, you didn't I missed that, the didn't trick you? there. There's me, your marketing manager. No, so so it's, it's the same, that you have a fixed price for certain yeah. services. That is, and you're right, the choice. I mean, let's face it, in a modern world where there are billion choices a day, far too many choices to make every single day. This is what we identify. There's simply, when you're going through the process of buying something, do I have to know this? Do I have to do have to do that. What about if I have that? And you think I'll, I'll go away and think about that for a night, and then you come back and even more confused. Or you don't come back at all, and it all goes horribly wrong. It sort of goes into the spiral of despair of which one should I? I had I had to buy another iPad for the company uh, the other day, and I haven't been following the iPad developments because I've got bored of it. They all look the same to me now. Oh, the new ones are nice. They're nice edges. They're nice edges, but look at this iPad. And I've seen an iPad. No, anyway. they're, they're lovely. They're really high tech things. Lovely. And I, I thought I've got. I've just got to. Oh, which one do I do? Do I go for that one? That one seems to be an older model. But it seems, does it go that pen? Does it? And I went. Ah, I'm just going to buy one. Bang. And then, and then my colleague comes along this morning and says, "Oh, did you get the pro one?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "Oh, the pen works with the old one." Oh God. <laughs> And you go back through the decision and think, oh, you know, blow it. Again, too much. And that's for Apple, who are notoriously good at, you know, cutting decision out. You're going to spend a lot of money or you're going to spend a lot of money. That's yeah. Apple's process, which yeah. is quite effective. Well, just just coming back to inventive people, if I may. One of the reasons I um, sort of developed that concept is, A, because it's useful to us. I, I hate sort of quoting for and come up with prices. But also it's a bit of retaliation against something like People Per Hour, which is the service is fine and Fiverr. The problem is for me is as someone who does need contractors, so I need people who can do video for me and, and copywriting and so on, I don't have much time to find the right people. Yeah. And when you go on somewhere like People Per Hour, you can find decent people on there at a really good price. You know, not even necessarily yeah. cheap, but really good people. But it takes time. Yes. You have to look yeah. around. You have to put the right keywords in. Then you have to look at the stars and go through their testimonies and ratings. Yeah. And for someone like me, there's just too much choice there. Yeah. And while I know I can find people on there, and I have, you know, a lot of the robots on our current site are designed by People Per Hour people, it takes time to find people on there. And so it, it was it was that um, combating against the choice Yes. You know, this paradox of choice, basically. So you definitely have that side. Cut out the choice. And I know some people say, oh, I wanted to buy individual. And you always get, you might get that as well, where you say, oh, I just want that part of your service. Okay, you can make a decision whether you offer that or not. But with us, we, we, we've gone very, well, you know, absolute with it. No, it is that or nothing. And again, it is, we're talking about the majority. It's helping the majority like crazy. The number of inquiries we're getting about the actual products has gone way down. The sales have gone up which yeah. is obviously very nice that allows us to develop more put more into it etc so i mean you know that but that's much better from a conversion point of view it's a lot better yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah i think that's great but the other thing is if you've got a, a tool set in front of you it, it makes a bit about like your service as well you know you, you're given a menu of what to do this is fantastic i don't have to really i want that 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 i can tick that 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 okay and that, i'm going to get that package that's great and you know what you've got it's a bit like getting everything in one go mm. i don't have to think well did i need that tool did i suddenly it's a bit like getting the ipad did i need the pencil apple pencil with it no just get it all in one go so Apple, if you're listening, you should have put the pencil in the iPad thing because I can make a decision. So, you know, it's yeah, it's, it's all that. It's making that decision, decision, decision. I know. I remember, I remember doing a talk on the paradox of choice. It was a, an article that my wife had written, Lou had written, and I sort of took the bones of that and made a presentation out of it. I think when I was doing foreign networking, I, mm. this was my little talk. And it was all about me standing in the shopping aisle. So I was, I was in a in a Tesco's or, or Sainsbury's or Waitrose, actually, probably. Oh, um, well, is that from your very posh area? <laughs> from the Cotswold. So you stood, in, you stood in the supermarket and you're looking at loaves of bread. Or actually, cheese was the example I used. You're looking at cheese. Mm. Now, the variety of cheese you can get, you've yeah. got some at eye level, which is really the ones they want you to yeah. buy or, or the brands that are positioned and jostled for. Then you've got the cheaper ones and then you've got the mid-range ones, the really expensive ones and the super expensive ones. Yeah. I think you had, uh, I can't remember the numbers, but something like 57, this is on Waitrose website, about like 57 varieties of extra mature cheese. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. And now if you know your cheese, that yeah, you, yeah. you know what to go for. And, yeah. that, and, and you know, it's like knowing a brand. That's why we go for brands because you yeah. can just pick that brand out of all the mess that you see there, yeah. which is why brands are so important. To me, going shopping, I don't want all that choice. You know, yeah. at, there's actually very little difference between a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, that's... the brands might argue that at that point, but there is generally very little difference. And for me, it's wasting a lot of time. It's, yeah. it's, it's additional cognitive um, overhead, which I don't want. Yeah. I just want to go shopping. I know we need extra mature cheese for our lasagna or something like that. So I want to go for, for that. But actually, it's making things more difficult. And it's forcing people to go for certain brands just because that's what they know. And I think, you know, yeah. our job as business owners is to remove that um, choice yeah. where at all possible. So, you know, your annual um, plan or subscription membership, whatever you want to yeah, call it, yeah, yeah. if that can reduce choice and make that decision easier for people, mm. I think it's great. And the, the very fact that they can just sign up for the annual plan and stop paying after that, and that's it, they can keep it forever. Yeah. So it's exactly as if they bought the box product. I mean, yeah, this is the thing. I mean, time will tell. Time, time will really tell. Yeah. I, but, uh, you know, so far, so good. But I, I think this is everything. It is about reinventing your company as well every so often because sometimes you need to be making a decision that is uncomfortable you know you think this could ruin absolutely everything but also you have to think about mainly from the customer's point of view how are their buying habits changing over time and we're all customers i mean mm. everybody who's watching this podcast will be a customer of various products many 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 too many products and uh, things change over time so for example we were talking about like oh, well, we're talking about ancient things like box software that came on floppy disks mm. and cds and all that yeah. okay so i mean th this <laughs> There's probably quite a few people watching this who don't even know what that is. Okay, that's great. And the, you still got the mentality from back then, though. Yeah. And you look around you, you know, the world has changed. And let's face it, we're late to the party. The whole subscription mechanism was made popular, uh, you know, many, you know, before the Creative Cloud. The Creative Cloud was one of the big ones for the creators, obviously. It's going to change again. It's going to be uncomfortable again. And some people don't like change. And that is completely reasonable. And you also have, uh, it's very interesting to see how different countries react to mm. different pricing. So, for example, we found uh, a lot of resistance in the Germanic uh, countries. So, in Germany, in the Netherlands, uh, in uh, Scandinavian countries, Northern European countries, let's face it. Less than Britain. Britain is more aligned to America financially. Yeah which is quite interesting. But in Germany, there's still a big thing about paying cash or not having a credit card. And yeah. you think, really? Can you survive in the world without you know, without that? Of course you can. It's just that like we're just so used to getting our credit card on your case, a phone or whatever. Bing! Like that. Whereas they, you know, get out a brown paper envelope and we'll start counting. I'm being very checklistic, obviously. But there is that mentality in a different country. And again, you've got to, well, in some way, I, I admire it, to be honest, but you've got to also cater for it as best as you can. But equally, we're talking about what fits the majority. Yeah. If you don't have a credit card, you can't use a new service. That's it. You know, it, 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 otherwise it gets complex again. Just before we finish, you currently got um, looking for a, a web developer for, Ooh. for the well primed, well primed. Yeah, yes. I knew you wanted to go there. Now this may go out after you've filled the position. Yeah. So, but you know, do tell us a little bit about that. And I know there are positions coming up at Astute all the time. You know, tell us a little bit mm. about what it's like to work at Astute. What's it like to work at Astute? Yeah. I don't. I've never worked there. He just sits in the corner. I just sit in the corner, rocking gently. Um, basically, we're looking for uh, another web developer, experienced one, because we're finding more and more that the website side of things has gone up so and we're not just talking about a website to train or give you know the ability to purchase or anything like that or manage your account it's getting more and more integrated like duh everybody's going to be watching going yeah that's that's the modern world yeah but it sort of creeps up on you as well that you realize oh well we could offer this service so for example we have uh, something called astui which is a complete separate service from the plugins that we do and that's an api for web developers for all vector technology etc you've got that side now we're looking to recruit people on but it's it's one of those lovely challenges. We, we're based in Hereford, which is... People say, always say, where's Hereford? Imagine London and go left. Keep going left until you nearly hit Wales. When you nearly hit Wales, back up a little bit and you're in Hereford. It's just that, yeah. That's it. You might know the place. So this is Hereford. So do we have people remotely or actually... Well, I was going to ask you, yeah. It's, in the early days, you were very much like that they, you want people to work here. It's not, not about control. It was about building that team. Is that something you're open to? It's about <laughs> I want them here. Yeah. Is, are you more open to remote working now? Oh, yeah. We, we To be honest... It started with uh, my colleagues working remotely. Right. So, for example, the uh, developers, all the engineers, actually, who work on the C++, the, the program side of things, are remote. You know, our senior web developers actually in-house here. Our marketing, training, support, design side, uh, and obviously all the administration side is all based in the office. Uh, it depends on specialities. Yeah. I've had quite close contact with a company called uh, InVision over the last couple of years. And it's very interesting. They're, they're, they're a role model in terms of 
working absolutely remotely. Right. So when I spoke, oh, here's name dropping. When I spoke to the CEO, oh, no, when I spoke to the uh, the guy who founded it, he's an interesting guy, and he basically spoke to him, and he was working from home. And I'm thinking, oh, where's the office? He hasn't got an office. Nobody's got an office. This is a company of hundreds of people. They they promote it. They they make it very public. That, you know, that's one of their benefits. They yeah. say so. The people working in caravans, people working in sheds, people. I've I've spoken to people everywhere. People working we work places, and right. especially in America, etc. But sometimes I think having an office has its benefits as well because the ability to interact and talk to each other and overhearing oh this project's going on oh perhaps I, I know something about that da, da, da. you lose all that so there are pros and cons yeah, so, uh, and people so, yeah. try and compensate for that with slack but something like that is too for me it's it's too much noise going on whereas actually mm. you can I mean maybe it's different but if you're in an office you can you can filter out some, yeah. some of that conversation with other people I don't know I'm, I'm ruined I work on my own always work on my own I couldn't work with anyone else I'm, I'm you know you hermit <laughs> <laughs> but for some people actually it's a bit isolating to do yeah, that yeah, so yeah, actually yeah. there's there are pros and cons but yes, I, m- yeah. maybe it comes down to just getting the right person to get the right person you really have to go to where they are and if, yeah. and if, if they're going to work from Germany or they're south of Spain and that's the right person for the job then that All ideally about attitude. if you're around in Hereford that would be uh, you know Pop you, oh yeah, please. No, I, I mean we're, we're always looking, you know, for people who are, you know, in the sphere of the of the world what we're, we're operating in, which in Hereford is quite rare. Let's it face is. it. Anyway, yeah, let's not make any comments about that. Yeah, we've got we'll, a lovely we'll, we'll make sure there's links to the jobs page. Whether I don't Thank know whether you. the job will still be open at that point, but we'll, yeah, we'll get it out there. It's certainly an interesting company to look at. And yeah, uh, you do canoe you. trips, which are, which I've been invited. You, to you've been advice. invited. You yeah. you weren't on the most recent one. We shunned you on the most recent one because it was so last minute. Yeah, don't worry. Only three people sank in that uh, trip, which was <laughs> hilarious because I wasn't one of them if i was one of them i wouldn't have said that to be honest but uh it, it was like and yeah we we try and do things together we try and pull people you know we've got people all over the world uh working for us so we've got you know somebody in america in russia costa rica and france up north in england which is a completely different country as well it is, yeah. it's uh, it's bleak up north i'm from up <laughs> north so i can say it um so yeah you've got people from all over the place so it's the personality not so much in the personality in terms of how ah, we have great great laughs together but the the right attitude yeah, yeah they, they've got a fit and, and it, you know in terms of skill it help, helps to have the knowledge some of it can be learned or learned on the job but i think the right person is, is more important than anything else because if they don't fit if they don't work well and they don't yeah. understand what yeah. you're trying to do or what the company's trying to do it's just not going to work yeah, yeah, well, good luck nice. with that I hope that goes well thank you very much you said that very sincerely anyway. that's very sincere yeah. oh, that's <laughs> Nick, thank you. I've been meaning to talk to you about the subscription annual pricing uh, for some time because I'm just interested in that because that's kind of how we work a little bit in terms of this sort of long term everything in in approach. And I I like it. You know, I like that from my perspective. If I'm buying for something or that's how that's what I want to offer for people. So I was just interested in that transition. So thank you very much. Pleasure. No, thank you very much. And uh, until the next podcast in 10 years time, we'll, we'll do another. Until the next one. Okay, so I've just finished the interview with Nick. Uh, Really good to catch up with him, see what was going on. Um, and yeah, really pleased to, to see him again. Uh, if you're interested in catching up with us online, um, you can visit our website for the show notes, ratherinventive.com, um, or you can subscribe on YouTube, um, or go onto iTunes to uh, find out a little bit more and subscribe there. Um, anyway, thanks for listening. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll catch you later. Uh,